Hello, I'm Claire Smith and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a perfume declutter. I haven't done a fragrance declutter since July last year, so I really don't do them that often. But I've come to realise that I've got quite a few fragrances now that I just either don't reach for, or when I do reach for them, I just don't enjoy them. So there's no point in me hanging on to them because they just feel like they're distracting me from the rest of my fragrances and making me feel guilty for not using them. So I'd rather pass them on and let somebody else enjoy them. So if you like this kind of content, then please press the like button and please also consider subscribing if you haven't done already. And also please check out my playlist if you are interested in my content. So let's get on with the first declutter. So the first fragrance is Prada La Femme EDP. So this fragrance I picked up sometime last year and I've been trying it out and I've just come to the conclusion it's just not me. So this fragrance is incredibly soapy. and I think that's really the main problem that I have with it. It's just too soapy for me. But I can see that it's quite elegant and I can see why some people would enjoy this fragrance. It's just personal choice. So this fragrance is a white and yellow floral fragrance. I would say it's probably more along the lines of the yellow florals than the white florals. It has frangipani and it also has tuberose. The tuberose here is really quite effervescent, almost sparkly. I think really the, the problem is in the dry down for me because it's kind of powdery and also quite warm but also with that soapiness to the fragrance. And I find that a little bit cloying. It's a little bit too much for me. Actually, this fragrance has pretty good projection. It also has decent lasting power. I probably get five or six hours out of this fragrance, but I just have something very, very similar that I ultimately prefer. So Yulia sent me the oil perfumery version of Chanel Beige. And out of the two fragrances, Chanel Beige just wins out. Because it's sunnier, it just feels more luxurious. It feels like an, a really expensive body cream or a moisturiser or something like that. But it also has this sort of honeyed sweetness about it. It makes me feel like there's the whole flower, including all the nectar in the fragrance as well. And it just is a little bit more 3D compared with quite a flat feeling Prada La Femme. I think Prada La Femme is just not for me, so that's going. So the next fragrance is Rare Tiffany by Afnan. So I remember putting this one in my spring perfumes video and I remember saying in that video that I found the opening pretty rough. And I feel like that is really the crux of this. This is why I'm, I'm really just not into this fragrance and I've ended up selling it. I sold it back in the summer because I felt like it would sell better in the summer than in the winter. But I did take a little decan of this fragrance so I can tell you exactly how this fragrance smells. So, this fragrance to me is, is kind of a gentle, gingery, watery, floral, but very, very synthetic fragrance that in the dry down turns into that gentle, gingery, floral, but with a bit of musk and a slight woodiness. I think really the problem for me is, is that opening. It's just so, um, how can I describe it? Um, chemical, synthetic, a little bit like hairspray. It just isn't isn't the best the opening at all and even in the dry down actually if you smell close up it just doesn't smell the nicest of fragrances i know afnan rare tiffany is actually quite a loved fragrance on youtube I, i'd wear it but i just feel, felt like it, i wasn't really enjoying it it wasn't something that was for me afnan by rare tiffany i feel like i know why it was popular because it does stand out it is different ginger and, and watery florals is quite a distinctive combination but yeah, I just didn't really enjoy it and so I, I sold it. So Rev Tiffany by Afnan is my second declutter. So this next fragrance I bought because I remember my friend wearing this about 10 years ago and I was just curious to smell it again. And I just remember her smelling just so good wearing this fragrance. And I thought I'm gonna try it and see whether I smell like that and I, I just don't. So this one is Vera Wang's Love Struck Floral Rush. So. This fragrance is really quite an odd combination of notes for me and it's something that really comes off a little bit weird on my skin. So this has a lot of pink pepper in it primarily and also it has a, a kind of greenness to it, it has a bit of a sparkliness, a bit of an effervescent feel to it. There's also something a little bit sort of peachy fruity about it and also a lot of freesia. I'd say freesia is the other big note along with the pink pepper and there's also a little bit of a saltiness to it as well so it's really quite an odd combination this fragrance really has no longevity no projection and it's something that i just think smells really really terrible on me i feel like this fragrance makes me smell a bit like a hot socket a hot plug socket basically 
and I'm, I'm not about that life. So this one is, is gonna go. So that's Love Struck Floral Rush by Vera Wang. So the next fragrance is one from Latafa and it's Opulent Musk. So this fragrance, there are several reasons why I don't want this one anymore. But really, I think it's because it's leaking. The top is really badly leaking now. Every time I put the top back on, a little bit more of the fragrance leaks out. And I just don't want it to spill, spill everywhere and damage surfaces. So this one really has to go. Or I have to use it up in some way. Because it is leaking, I can't really pass it on to anybody. So I think I might just use this up as a room spray, maybe. I'm not really sure. If anybody has any other uses for fragrances that you don't really love, then please let me know down below. So this fragrance, I feel like it's just a little bit, uh, it's a bit harsh in the opening is how I'd put it. It's got really plasticky saffron to begin with. And then as it goes along, you get more of the fur and then also some musk. The musk here is quite clean, but it's not really a white musk. And actually as this dries down further, it becomes a little bit more of a creamy lemon fragrance, but also with a, a kind of leathery tinged saffron almost. I think the dry down of this fragrance really makes me think of doctor surgeries. It makes me think of those wooden tongue pushes that they use to hold your tongue down with when they're looking down your throat. If you wanted to sum up the dry down of this fragrance, wooden tongue pushes would definitely be something that covered most of it. So this fragrance has amazing longevity and it also has really good projection, but it's one of those that you kind of go nose blind to. I think, yeah, for me in the opening, it just smells like a cleaning product and I'm just not really about that. I just want something that that makes me excited to wear a fragrance and, and this one doesn't make me excited to wear it. It makes me think that I smell a little bit clinical and I smell a bit robotic. It's not a natural smelling fragrance, this one. So I think that's really why it needs to go. So that's Latafa's Opulent Musk. So the next fragrance declutter is actually one that I've already resold. And this fragrance was a 100ml bottle of Le Vie Belle by Lancome. So I bought this in a gift set along with a shower gel and also a moisturiser back at the end of the pandemic shop closures. So I think June 2020 is when I bought this one. And I remember seeing it in a shop for only £30. And I just couldn't believe my eyes, basically. I just thought it was such a good deal. And I wasn't really thinking and I just bought it. And I'd already got a couple of minis and I was using those up. And you might have seen those in my empties videos, actually. I have used up quite a lot of miniature bottles of Le Vie Belle. And it's just something that I like, but I don't really want to smell of generally because just so many other people wear Le Vie Belle. And it's something that really has been one of the more popular fragrances of the last 10 years, really. I think really it's been so successful because it is a really strong fragrance. It is something that will fill a room. It is something that's really long lasting and it has an appealing scent profile. It, I've got really nothing to bad to say about Le Vie Belle. It's something that just has a, a universal appeal to it, a mass appeal to it. And it's if you haven't smelt it, I'm sure you probably have. It's a very deep, rich, almost sort of sugary, sweet patchouli fragrance. I receive patchouli fragrance. I mean, nothing, nothing against it. I just didn't want to go through an entire 100 ml bottle of it. When I realised I didn't want the bottle of Le Vie Belle, I did offer it to my mum, but she she said no. I think really my mum is someone who only really wears Yves Saint Laurent Reve Gauche. So I, I really understand that she didn't want that fragrance, so I just sold it on. So that's a Le Vie Belle by Lancome. So this next fragrance has really shocked me. It was in my most worn fragrances of 2021 video, and I'm surprised just how big a turnaround I've had with this fragrance. So this one is Calvin Klein's Reveal. So this fragrance, if you haven't tried it, is really quite strange. So it opens with salt and pepper notes, really. They're the main two things you get in the opening. And people say that the opening of this fragrance reminds them of salt and pepper crisps. Personally, I don't get that, but I get where they're coming from because it is salty and it is peppery. But yeah, as this progresses, it turns into almost a dirty beach fragrance. It makes me think of, you know, when you've got a bikini on, you've come out of the sea, maybe it's a bit of a cool day, not, not too hot, and you've kind of got the, the salt drying on your skin with that sort of neoprene, new, new bikini kind of smell as well. There's a slight rubberiness to this fragrance somehow. I think as this dries further, it then completely transforms. It's basically an unrecognizable fragrance in the dry down. So you still have a little bit of that saltiness, but it's really like a golden caramel fragrance in the dry down. It's really quite 
a transition one this this fragrance it really does change throughout throughout the fragrance lifetime so this really doesn't have any projection really um, in the main but it is quite a long lasting fragrance it's something that's a skin scent for most of its life i think this fragrance is just quite hard to love until it gets to that final stage the final stage is gorgeous but it just takes a couple of hours to get to get there and i think that's really why this one has to go for me because even though it is interesting, it's not something that I always want to smell of. So that's Calvin Klein's reveal. So the next fragrance is one actually from Shea and Blue, and it was a fragrance that I bought as part of this gift set. So this gift set has five different Shea and Blue fragrances in it. And there's one that I'd already tried that I knew that I didn't really like, but it was better value for me to buy this gift set than to buy the individual fragrances, which is why I bought it anyway, despite me knowing that I wouldn't like 20% of this gift set. So the one that I'm going to declutter is Shea and Blue Black Tulip. So if you see my five fragrances I love, five fragrances I hate video, this is actually one of the fragrances that I listed as my hates. So you can tell just how much I dislike this one. So a lot of people love this fragrance. Um, please don't let me put you off it. I feel like I'm an anomaly with this fragrance. I, I really do stand out as someone who just doesn't like it. I feel like there aren't many people who don't like this fragrance. So this one to me opens with a really almost boozy feeling plum but it is still quite powdery and then there's that thing that I think is supposed to be the white chocolate in this fragrance but to me it just smells super powdery really artificially sweet and quite cloying and that white chocolate note is really the thing that I really don't enjoy about this fragrance I just find it so cloying and it also makes me think as it goes along further into the dry down of cowpole medicine, those children's medicines that I used to take when I was little. And yeah, it, it just has that scent memory for me. It doesn't smell exactly like cowpole, but that sort of sweetness, the artificial sweetness with that powdery cloying feeling and the fruitiness just makes me think of cowpole medicine. And I think that's really why I can't wear this fragrance, why it just turns my stomach. So this fragrance actually for Shea and Blue has really good longevity and really good projection as well, which is quite ironic considering I don't like this one when I like a lot of other Shea and Blue fragrances. So that's Black Tulip by Shea and Blue. So this next fragrance is one from Versace and it's Yellow Diamond Intense. So this fragrance I've had for a couple of years now and look at just how little I've used of this fragrance. I remember during summer this year, I made a positive effort to try to get to know this fragrance more and to try to wear it more. And the days that I did wear it, I just didn't really enjoy it. I think this fragrance is a big case with me of expectation versus reality based on how the bottle looks. From the bottle and the colour of it, you expect this to be a really fresh, zesty, citrusy fragrance. Something quite light, quite sparkly, something really summery, something that is potentially quite refreshing and cooling. And it just isn't. This fragrance is maybe zesty and citrusy for the first couple of seconds. But once that opening has gone, you're really left with quite a creamy floral fragrance. So the main notes in this for me are really the freesia and also the osmanthus. The osmanthus can actually turn even a little bit leathery in this fragrance. And there's also an, a really warm ambery musk in the dry down, which to me is not something I want to wear in the summertime. Maybe really I should be wearing this fragrance in the autumn or perhaps even in the winter. But yeah, it's just not something that I really love. And I feel like even though it does have good longevity, the projection is also just not there with this fragrance. So I am, I am going to be letting go of this one. So that's Versace Yellow Diamond Intense. So this next fragrance is another one from Latafa and it's Latafa's Shake Al Shook. So this fragrance is really quite difficult for me in the opening. I think that's really why I'm decluttering this fragrance. It's so bad in the opening that I don't really want to reach for it. So the thing that I don't like about the opening is that it's quite screechy. The caramel in this fragrance, caramel in inverted commas, is just really harsh and it's really, really sweet and just too much for me. The, the opening is really more about the, the saffron and the cinnamon though and that to me is really quite plasticky and unpleasant in this fragrance as well. The opening is just a big no for me. Actually, the beauty of this fragrance is in the far dry down. In the far dry down, you do get a powdery rose and it really is quite pleasant, but just getting there is quite a journey. 
I think this fragrance is also just way too strong for me. It's something that I really have to plan when I wear it because it's something that can really knock out rooms. It's something that leaves a humongous trail. If you want to be smelt 20 meters away from where you've just been, then this is the fragrance to do it. This one, if you want to be beast mode, this is the fragrance. But I would say in most of my life, I don't want to be smell fragrance. This is something I feel uncomfortable wearing at work because it is just so strong. And yeah, I think this one just has to go because I've hardly worn it. I think I wore it like three or four times last year. And each time I can't say that I really enjoyed it that much. So that's Shake Al Shook by Lataffa. So this next fragrance is one that I bought as part of a bundle and actually I was after Marc Jacobs by Marc Jacobs because that is an incredibly rare fragrance now and I really want to try that one and this was just part of that bundle and I didn't really want the fragrance but I looked at the notes and I thought well I'll give it a go. So this one is Carolina Herrera 212 VIP and it comes in this really weird pill bottle and actually when you take the lid off you realise that it's magnetic so that's kind of cool because I've never had a magnetic lid for a perfume before. But that really is where the good times end. So this fragrance has really quite nice looking notes. I was quite excited to try this one. It's got rum, it's got passion fruit, it's got vanilla, it's got tonka. It's something that I could have potentially loved. But this one's just so screechy. It's so sweet, so screechy. I'd say I get most of all the rum from this fragrance. But rum here is just not something that's inviting or delicious. It's something that is just in with all that screechiness. It's just generically sweet and just not something that I want to smell like. It's sort of quite something you would have smelt in a club about 10 years ago is how I'd put this fragrance. It's just not for me. It's not for me right now in my lifetime. It's something as well that really doesn't have that good longevity. And even though it does project, I just don't really want it to. So that's um, 212 VIP by Carolina Herrera. So that's the final fragrance in this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed it, then please press the like button and please also consider subscribing if you haven't done already. And please let me know down below if you've tried any of these fragrances or if you're considering decluttering any of your own fragrance collection. I'd be really interested to find out what you're not loving. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.